All right. Well, here we go. Welcome to AP Physics 1. You already know I am Mr. Kelly, and I'll be taking you through to June with AP Physics 1. Happy to be doing so. First thing I want to say, after welcoming you aboard, of course, is the connections. I'm going to teach you all the topics. We're going to go over all the topics. We're going to review them in detail, and we're going to do lots of problems. Every time we do a problem, you should be thinking of how it could be applied in other ways. See past, as often as you can, the problem that we're working on to see the greater implications. That's how you're going to get the most out of this class. So that would be my uh, advice. Okay, well, <laughs> AP Physics Course Guidelines are a good place to start. That has to do with Monroe Township High School and how we're going to be running our class. Uh, it's going to tell you how your grade is going to be determined and some other things as well. Uh, it'll talk to you about a graphing calculator. I recommend a good graphing calculator, and that'll help you through the uh, class to use that. And below it, because calculators are so important, is the calculator policy. And that's the calculator policy for the college board. And we'll go along with that. Graphing calculators are fair game on the multiple choice and on the problem section for the AP exam. So why not for us? Okay, speaking of the College Board, I also have the AP Physics 1 course details from the College Board listed there. And you might want to take a look at those so you can understand what they're looking for and what I'll be going for this year too. Okay, let's see. The summer assignment you already know about. I will have taken a look at your summer assignment, so we'll build on that, of course. For some of you, I know this is your first year of physics, so we'll see how it's going to go. Some of you have already taken some physics, right? That'll work to your advantage. Okay, um, in the course guidelines, I do mention after-school help and makeups. And uh, we do the after-school makeups if you need to do them, not in the testing center but in the science after school help room. And we find that's a little less chaotic for people who are making up tests. Um, okay, class meetings. This is going to be an important one. Uh, the class meetings will tell you and remind you of what you did in class and what you're responsible for. I've clicked on the link here. And uh, for each class meeting, there'll be a breakdown of what we did and what your expectations are. Uh, and what expectations are of you, too. All right, so uh, here, you turned in your summer assignments. You worked on the Find the Speed activity. That was fun, right? I hope it was. And then you wrote a quick formal lab write-up for that. So that was good, too. And you are now, let's see, the assignment was to complete the 1D motion PowerPoint problem. So a little while from now, you'll be working on those problems. That'll be pretty good. Uh, okay. And uh, the videos. So you're watching this introductory video right now. You linked on that to check it out. And later on, you're going to watch the 1D motion video. But every day, if you're in class, it'll be a reminder of what you need to do. If you weren't in class, it's a great way to keep up with what's going on in class because we are going to have to move pretty fast to keep up with all the work. All right, well, that's a good introduction, I think, anyway, to the class and to the web page, these resources that are available to you. I will move on now to the introductory uh, uh, presentation here, and that will give you an idea of what we are going to be doing um, uh, with our uh, class here. One of the things that I do want to show you is the equation list. So this is the equation list that you're going to see if you take the AP exam. This is what they let you have at your disposal. So it's a good thing to get used to because it's also the way I'm going to be presenting material to you. Uh, here you can see the metric prefixes. I'm going to talk about those in a little bit. So those are represented here. And importantly over here you can see the formulas. And these first three that I'm attempting to circle here are the ones that we're going to start off with. And uh, so that's a pretty valuable thing for you too. All right, let's see. What other basics can I be telling you about here? Well, glad you asked. I actually have an introduction for you here. So let's go through that and give you an idea of where we're going in AP Physics 1. 
Okay, first of all, AP Physics 1, like all physics really, involves measurements. So um, there are going to be physical quantities that uh, will show up in a problem, but they're all physical quanti quantities that if it was in real life, they would have had to have been measured, all based on measurements. So we are, for the most part, going to use the scientific units for measurement. We're going to be throwing out all kinds of unit for measurement, that's for sure, miles and, um, you know, kilometers and centimeters and inches, and, but for the most part, we're going to be dealing with the scientific units. And that means that the base unit for length is the meter, for mass is the kilogram, and for time is the second. Now, sure, we're going to be using hours, we're going to be doing all this. But there are lots of units that are what we call derived units. So in the derived units, there are going to be units that are made up of other units. So for speed, we would have meters per second. Certainly, again, we could have miles per hour or inches per decade or anything that we really wanted to do. But in the next example that I give there, the Newton, which is a unit for force that we're going to become very familiar with, it's derived from those three units, the kilogram, the meter, and the second. So it's good from the beginning to start talking about them uh, because everything is built off of those three things, those three measurements. Okay, so you should also be familiar with the metric prefixes. I showed you on the formula sheet there that they have them for you. So you should be able to manipulate metric prefixes and you can see that they're given to you pretty well there. Another thing is scientific notation. You know, these uh, base 10 ways of representing numbers are pretty convenient when you're dealing with very large numbers and with very small numbers. Um, so the scientific notation I'm going to ask you to use if your answer is greater than 1,000 or less than 0.1, and that will give a nice clarity to the presentation uh, of your answers. And uh, that leaves me with the one that has been sitting out there for a little while, and that is the significant figures. Scientific notation will also help with significant figures, and very briefly with significant figures, um, we're always making a guess is what it comes down to. And the guess is significant to a point. But think about it. If we're ever measuring anything, we could always get an instrument that's a little bit more precise. Right? So whatever we're doing, we're getting some numbers that we're pretty uh, confident about, and then we're making a guess. Maybe you have a ruler that goes out to 0.1 centimeters. So you say it's about 3.2 centimeters. But uh, is it right on the line, or is it 3.2 centimeters and on its way to 3.3? You're going to make a guess. If it's right on the line, you might say 3.20. But if it's in the middle, you might say 3.23. And that guess is significant because there's a little difference between being on the line and being off the line, especially when you're making calculations. Um, and that's what significant figures is really all about. If you have 3.25 and you've made a guess on the 5, then all three of those uh, figures are significant. And maybe you multiply it by another number with three significant figures to it. But your calculator, or computers for that matter, might give an answer that goes out to 115 decimal places. How significant is that? It's not. So in your answers, you need to use the right number of significant figures, and you're limited by the data that you started with. Well, you're not limited by anything, only by the beginnings that we've started here, and that's about it for the introduction. The next thing that you're going to see is a little discussion of one-dimensional motion. And thanks for coming along. It's going to be a great year.